Today we're going to be cleaning the idle air control valve and throttle body on a four cylinder Honda Accord. This here is the throttle body and the idle air control valve down below. Sometimes they get clogged up with carbon deposits from the PCV system and we're going to need to clean these out in order to improve the throttle response as well as the idle. To get to the throttle body we're going to remove this air intake hose tube as well as the box and all of the hoses that connect to it. I'm going to first start by loosening up this 8mm bolt on the hose clamp and then disconnect the air temperature sensor and then up here near the top we're going to disconnect this PCV hose and then up here near the top I'm going to remove this pinch clamp and then use a flat screwdriver to pry off this hose. And then over here on the airbox, there's four 8mm bolts that need to be removed. You don't remove them all the way. Alright, now I'm going to lift off the holes from the throttle body. And lift off the airbox and remove the assembly from the vehicle. Now at this point, you can also replace your dirty air filter and vacuum out the airbox. This is what the throttle body looks like and there's a hole that goes down to the idle air control valve. If I turn the plate, you can see it doesn't look too bad. I thought it would be a lot worse. Now there's two ways to clean this out. You can just open this up and put some carb cleaner with a toothbrush in there and clean it out or we can open up the throttle body and idle air control valve and clean it out properly. Alright, we need to get the wiring out of the way, so I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers. Pop this guy off, as well as the throttle position sensor from the throttle body. There's one more vacuum line to remove here, there's this weird clip that's on it. And then I can pop this vacuum line free. Next I'm going to disconnect the wire that goes to the idle air control valve. Let's use a screwdriver and pry that free. This part's optional, you can use a 12mm wrench to loosen the throttle cable nut being careful not to play with the adjustment and then remove it from the bracket that holds it on. Alright, there's four 12 millimeter nuts and bolts that hold the throttle body on that I'm going to remove next. Mm. Bolts are always harder to free than nuts. Alright, so with everything free except for the coolant lines, I can then remove the throttle body. So here's what the throttle body looks like from the back. As you can see, we can open up the butterfly valve and clean this out with some carb cleaner. We also have access to the two Phillips screws that hold the idle air control valve that we can remove and clean, as well as clean the intake. Okay, so I've tried to break the screw free with a Phillips screwdriver and it just stripped out. And I've also tried to use a vice grip and it's also slipping a bit with the angle that I have back there. So I'm going to have to remove the two coolant lines in order to get the throttle body off to get a better angle on it to take those screws off for the idle air control valve. Alright, so I've got some newspaper here positioned to capture any coolant that might fall out. I'm just going to back off these clamps here and then break this free. Yeah, a little bit of coolant spilled out, not too much. And break it free. And a little bit more coolant spills out of that one. That's a lot of coolant coming out. Alright, you can jam one of these screws from the throttle body in there to stop more coolant from coming out. This here is the throttle body removed from the vehicle. You can see it's easier to clean the butterfly valve once it's off. This is your throttle position sensor, a vacuum line, and the two coolant lines plugged into here. This here is the idle air control valve. These are the two screws that we need to remove. They're stripped out with the Phillips screw, so I'm just going to use a vice grip here. Clamp that down and give it a twist to break it free. Yeah, that one's broken free. And this one here. Yeah, this one's free as well. And now I can turn these out with a regular screwdriver. And of course now with those two screws removed we have the idle air control valve. This here is the idle air control valve. It's just basically a solenoid that controls the air intake in and out when the car is at idle and the throttle body is closed. As you can see there is a little bit of carbon deposit in there and I'm going to be using a little bit of carb cleaner in order to clean that out. Make sure you use gloves with carb cleaner because it can irritate your skin. I'm going to spray a little bit of this in there. Then I'm going to use my dad's toothbrush and clean out all the carbon deposits inside of here. Next I'm going to work on the throttle body. And again use a toothbrush. Clean out all the carbon deposits. You can also use an old rag and wipe it down. And make sure you get into this passage here where it goes into the idle air control valve. Alright, I've got the throttle body nice and clean on both sides. You also want to make sure that this mating surface is clean, otherwise coolant can leak out. And here's the cleaned up idle air control valve. Then I'm going to mate the two together and make sure that the gasket is nice and flat. And then install my Phillips screws. Now you don't want to tighten these too tight because next time you should be able to take this off on the car. Make sure that this mating surface is clean against the intake of the car. Now before I install the throttle body onto the car, I'm going to clean up the air intake a little bit. And again use my brother's toothbrush and clean out all the carbon deposits. And then give it a quick wipe with the rag. Alright, this is really stuck. Don't try this at home guys. Alright, so I can't get the screw out for the mass airflow sensor. So we're just going to leave that for now. But if you could get it out, it's good to clean it with some electrical contact cleaner. Alright, so I've got some newspaper down in here. I'm going to first remove the plug from this lower hose. And then I'm going to bring in my throttle body. And connect it here. 
trying to avoid the leaks. And then use the pliers to bring in this pinch clamp and then replace the other coolant holes into the throttle body and replace this pinch clamp over here. Now at the back here I'm going to replace my throttle cable and then we're going to replace the throttle body back onto the studs of the intake and then catch the 12 millimeter bolts and then we're going to snug down these 12 millimeter bolts and nuts. Next I'm going to replace the accelerator cable making sure I don't change the adjustment and then tighten this down with a 12 millimeter wrench. You want to make sure there's just a very slight play in the throttle when it's at idle. Before I put the airbox back on, I'm going to clean out the airbox with a vacuum. Next I'm going to replace this vacuum hose on the throttle body and then replace the throttle position sensor. Then I'm going to replace the air filter. Then I'm going to replace the airbox with the intake tube. And of course tighten down your 8 millimeter bolts for your air filter. Then at the back here we're going to replace this tube. And then replace this PCV hose here. And then replace the airflow temperature gauge. And then tighten down the hose clamp for the throttle body hose. So it looks like I forgot to plug in my idle air control valve, so I'm just going to plug that in right now. One more thing you might want to check is the PCV valve. It's located right here. This is the PCV hose. There's a clamp here that you need to loosen, just above the alternator. And that here is your PCV valve. You just have to use a 17 millimeter deep socket. Now usually these are on pretty tight, so I'm going to use an extension bar to break it free. And that's the PCV valve. The PCV valve is responsible for venting the crankcase and this is pretty much what causes a lot of the oil buildup in the intake. The way you can tell if it's good is if you shake it and you hear that rattling sound you know that the ball pin is free and it's working fine. But if it's stuck you won't hear that sound and it needs to be replaced. After cleaning it up it actually sounds a lot more free. So I'm just going to reinstall the PCV valve and then just tighten that up nice and snug and then just replace the PCV hose. Once everything's put back together, we're going to give it a quick start to make sure everything's working well before we reset the computer and refill the coolant. Now you might have to give it a little bit of gas for the throttle body cleaner to burn through. Now since we opened the throttle body, we introduce air into the cooling system, so we need to bleed it. So first we're going to open the coolant reservoir, and then we're going to open the radiator cap and leave it loose. Then I'm going to pull the negative terminal of the battery to reset the computer. Make sure you have your radio code before you do this. Then we're going to top off the coolant jug. I'm just using a little bit of deionized water. And after chugging your favorite adult beverage, we're going to reconnect the battery. Then we're going to start the vehicle. Well, at least my radio doesn't have a radio code. And then we're going to allow the engine to run with the radiator cap loose until the coolant fan kicks in to allow any air to escape from the cooling system. And you might want to also turn this over to the hot side. You can hear that burping in the heater core to burp out any air from the system. During this time, the computer will relearn idle with the new clean throttle body and idle air control valve. You can kind of see as the steam is escaping, the bubbles are coming out. You can also speed up the process by holding the RPMs a little bit higher. Okay, I think that should be it. The coolant system has now been bled. You can close everything back up. Make sure you check for leaks near the throttle body where you disconnected the throttle body lines. Finally, we're going to double check and top up the coolant levels in both the reservoir and the radiator. And that's the procedure for cleaning the throttle body and idle air control valve. I can definitely feel that the idle is a bit smoother when I put it into gear. I'm just going to spray a little bit of that. Whoa. Got in my eyes, yo. Got it in your eye too, eh?